We ran into Newt and Callista <laughs> last night. It was Raymond, myself, and the stragglers at 1130 at night with Hannity. And we were howling laughing because we're like, we all could barely stand up. But somehow Newt makes it all look simple. Newt, it's good to talk to you, my friend. How are you? Mom, well, I'm doing great. And uh, this is sort of the first family convention I've ever been to. Uh, it's just amazing. You have exactly. Melania on Monday. You have, you know, Don Jr. and Tiffany on Tuesday. You get Eric tonight. You get uh, uh, Ivanka and Donald on uh, Thursday. So it's, it's a very interesting formula. And I actually think the best surrogates he's got are, are his kids. That they're just they're remarkably good at, at communicating what he's all about and what he stands for. Well, that's actually a good point. Uh, I think we saw a political star in the making last night with Don Jr.'s speech. He's a he's very smooth, very tan. He's very, well. smooth, very smooth, very attractive, very and, uh, and uh, really went over very well. Um, Newt, let's talk about uh, the uh, – the, it's, it's stunning to me. Chris Christie was, was just destroying this narrative uh, earlier today on cable news. But the, the fact that we have a sitting governor of Ohio who's giving interviews – uh, criticizing the Republican nominee when the convention is being held for the first time in 80 years in Ohio, in Cleveland. And John John Kasich is out there, you know, trashing uh, Donald Trump. I mean, how, how is that in any way helpful? And, and will voters forget and forgive that? No, I mean, I, I don't know whether this is John Weaver, who has always been sort of anti-Republican, uh, I, I don't know the background to, to why Kasich, who I really like a lot, who is absolutely essential to our uh, ability to a balanced budget and has been a great governor of Ohio. I just don't know what's gotten in his head. I mean, my, my view was at a minimum, forget Trump, at a minimum, as the sitting governor of a state that's having a convention, which is bringing thousands and thousands of people to Cleveland, it's a great showcase for Cleveland. And by the way, the people of Cleveland have been wonderful. Uh, you contrast oh, their great. hospitality with John Casey's attitude, you know, and, and you just think, uh, what, what has gotten into him? It, it makes no sense to me, uh, and I feel sad for him. I mean, you don't want to live a life of, of being bitter uh, and wandering around doing goofy things. One thing that uh, I've noticed in our callers uh, and emails from across the country, Newt, is that the American people, again, reminding me of my old boss, Ronald Reagan, have such infinite wisdom and more of a pragmatic look at things. They're not obsessed with Melania's speech. Uh, they're not worried that the Bushes aren't here. They know that what's happening now in Washington doesn't work, and Hillary will be a continuation of the status quo. And so it's very interesting that, that I think there's some work, working class folks, just regular folks who don't maybe dip in and out of coverage for 20 minutes a day. They, they know something has to give, and they know that the only choice now is Donald Trump. And and yet these really fancy strategists and consultants and, uh, you know, all the, the Bushes and that whole crowd, they're apparently plotting away to rebuild the Republican Party, well, I guess with Bill Kristol, et cetera, after November. And, and those meetings are taking place. Well, look, I think they're just delusional. I mean, it's, it, it, it's a free country, and certainly people who want to get together and form sort of the – uh, you know, the antiquarian club of people who used to matter uh, can do so, but that's who they are, the people who used to matter. The world has changed, uh, and of course, if you're a consultant, uh, Trump is your worst nightmare because he didn't spend any money. Uh, he, you know, he, he didn't do what we think billionaires do. He didn't buy the nomination. Uh, he was more clever. He understood how to use social media better. He was more effective with the issues, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and he's his own consultant. I mean, in the end, He's a real threat to the entire consultant class because he, he puts the candidate back at the center of the campaign. What have you felt about the energy at the convention? It's, it's very different to watch it on TV than to be there. Uh, Joe Scarborough is saying he thinks the whole thing has been flat. And I was like, I don't know what he's watching, but I've actually been sitting in the stands to watch Christy, and I'll be watching you. Um, and I think people are just, it's like rocking. People are having a great time. There was an initial yeah. kind of tension I mean, with the, the roll call, the, but that, the people, that went the away delegates quickly. I, the delegates I run into all over the place have been remarkably, remarkably positive. And, and the fact is that uh, I, th I, th I think there's more positive energy here 
than any convention since 1980 when Reagan was nominated. Now, it's, it's not artificial. It's not the balloons and what have you. The people are really excited and they're really enthusiastic. And, you know, uh, I mean, you mentioned all the, the, the media foo about Melania. Melania was, was a rock star Monday night. Don Jr. was a rock star last night. Um, I think people feel increasingly good about it. And, of course, as pe- people say to me, well, is the party going to be unified? And I tell them, sure, right after Philadelphia. Uh, I mean, when you go from here and you watch a week of left-wing Democrats oh. being crazy, uh, I think that's going to guarantee so. that, that all but the most bitter Republicans are all going to get together to defeat Hillary. Um, yeah, we've had callers calling in saying sh- they voted for John Kasich twice. They uh, always really loved him. And they're p- saying, I'm, we're done. We've moved on. Shame on you. I yeah. mean, it's it's visceral. People people understand what's on the line here, Newt, with the Supreme Court, our foreign policy, our stagnant economy, and they can't believe that grown men are acting like babies. Well, exactly. I mean, I think uh, from that standpoint, I think the, the the folks who ran and lost just look they shrink when they follow this kind of bitterness. Uh, you know, this is a great moment in American history. We have proven once again that we have a system open to talent. There's no other place in the world where somebody can come from the outside mm-hmm. and have the kind of impact that, that Trump is having. Uh, and and uh, what he has achieved is historic. I mean, the, the only two examples I can think of are Andrew Jackson in the 1820s and William Jennings Bryan mm-hmm. in 1896. So we're really living Newt through Gink- something that's really unusual. Can't wait. Can't wait. Newt will be you're speaking tonight. We cannot wait to hear you. I'll be speaking at eight ten. Newt's uh, uh, a little bit later on. We're gonna take a break. Newt, thank you so much for joining us. We'll take a break here on your healthy radio addiction. 